In this video, we will describe the functionality of the Emergency Repair Console tool. ER Console is a Java-based application that helps you to recover or add an additional IP address to the ETH0 interface of the Infinite unit, reset the unit to the default factory configuration. The typical scenarios when the ER Console must be used are the IP address of the Ethernet interface has been forgotten or deleted by mistake. The Ethernet interface of the unit has been disabled from the web interface. The Ethernet interface has been deleted by mistake from the switch group. The software requirements are the following. Since ER console is Java-based, Java runtime environment should be installed on your PC. Next, the ER console software application can be obtained from the official Infinite Wireless FTP address. Some network requirements are important to be considered too. You should disable any antivirus and firewall running on your computer. We recommend to use simple unmanaged switch as intermediary device between your PC and the Infinite unit. To be noted that depending on the operating system of your PC, there is a small possibility that the default gateway should be specified as being the IP address of the unit in case this is known. The ER console exchanges information with the Infinite unit only during the boot up process. If a direct connection with the PC is in use, whenever the unit is reset in order to initiate the communication with the ER console, the Ethernet port of your computer will be flapping. It is therefore more suitable to connect the Infinite unit using an unmanaged switch. In this way, even if the unit is reset, the port on your computer will remain up. We'll move forward with the practical part of this video. In the first scenario, I will show you how to recover the IP address of the unit using the ER console and how to assign an additional IP address. In order to describe the recovery procedure, it is assumed that the physical connections between the infinite unit and the PC are performed as previously described. To be noted that the ER console only reads and assigns the IP addresses for the Ethernet interface. Let's begin. The first step is to open the ER console application. Next, Reset the Infinite unit by unplugging the Ethernet power supply cable from the IDU. Wait a few seconds and plug it back. The communication with the ER console takes place during boot up. So after a few more seconds, we can see the data in the Discovered Devices section. Here it shows the serial number of the unit and the IP address, which in my case is 0.0.0.0, .0 meaning that there is no IP configured for the Ethernet interface. Let's proceed by adding an IP address. Click on the plus button. In the new task window, input the serial number just obtained, which in this case is 200312. Make sure that the up interface option is selected. Next, input the new IP address with its mask. I will use 10.10.50.10 with the mask 255.255.255.0. Click OK. The ER console is waiting for the unit to be restarted in order to send the information about the new IP address. I will therefore unplug and plug back the power supply cable. After the reboot, we can see that the state of the task has changed to complete. Although, please note that the new IP address will not be displayed by the ER console. The next step is to assign an appropriate IP address to the Ethernet port of the PC in order to be able to access the unit. An IP address from the same subnet with the one I've just configured to the unit should be used. Let's set 10.10.50.50. Now let's open the web browser and try to access the unit using the IP address we've just assigned. The access to the unit was successfully recovered using the ER console. The last practical task is to reset the configuration of the unit to the default factory settings. First, you have to obtain the serial number of the unit as described in the first scenario. Afterwards, send this information to the Infinet Wireless Support Team by either calling to the support number, raising a new case on the website, or sending an email to the support team in order to obtain the factory password. I have already got my password via email and I will show you next how to use it. Click on the plus button. In the new task window, input the serial number of the unit. Select the reset configuration option. 
input the factory password obtained from the support team. I will get it from my email. Next, click on the OK button. The new task is in the waiting status because the unit has to be restarted. I will proceed to unplug and plug back the power supply cable. We can see that the status has changed to complete. We can assume now that the configuration is reset, so I'll try to access the unit using the default IP address of the Ethernet interface, 10.10.20.1. I'll first change the IP address on my laptop. Let's open the browser and try to access the unit with the default IP address. The access to the unit is permitted, so the configuration was reset to the factory settings, but the unit starts in the emergency mode, with the RF module disabled. In order to fully recover the functionality of the unit, we need to restore to factory settings for two times from the web interface or from CLI. Go to the maintenance page and click on Restore Factory Settings button. After the reboot, repeat the action. We can now see that the RF interface status is displayed, so the unit is fully recovered. This concludes the scope of the video. Thank you for watching.